Hi guys, in this video I want to talk about certain distribution characteristics that are very common and generic when confronting um, histograms and distributions in general. Okay, so here just to put it in a little bit of context in case you're watching this out of context, um, we're exploring our data. We have a univariate numerical data set, meaning we have one numerical variable, and we've sketched a histogram likely through the use of software. And now we're looking at this histogram and we're starting to get a feel for how the values of this variable are distributed. Are they spread out really far? Are they concentrated in a real narrow range? Are there peaks? Is there a single peak, multiple peaks? Is there no peak perhaps? Is, there, is the distribution symmetric or is it kind of lopsided, skewed one way or the other? Is there a dominant tail and almost a non-existent second tail? And also I want to talk about there are certain distributions that show up so often in different contexts in the world of statistics as well as the world of applied statistics which touches almost every field in this uh, academic field and beyond uh, that are so common that we've given them names okay so let's just I'm gonna sketch a couple forgive my bad drawings but um, I want to just get the points across on these few points so when we're looking at a distribution or discussing a distribution there are certain shapes if I can use this word as a general way to talk about what it, the distribution looks like and then we can break it down so let me just draw a few uh, just randomly common shapes so I'll do my best to be um, so I'm going to draw them with a curve. So you could think of this as a density curve. So the y-axis here could be density. The x-axis here is just the values of this numerical variable. Okay, so I'm drawing a curve instead of drawing the bars that go underneath it. Um, and so let me just draw a few of these and just, um, I won't even draw the axes. I'll just draw the curves themselves. And... We'll talk about each one in turn. We'll judge it and, and discuss what it looks like. Um, okay. Um, here's There's literally infinite possibilities. So I'm just going to draw a bunch of generic ones that you confront a lot in um, practice. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at these. So first off, let's let's go based on some of these bullets. Uh, I would break down the anatomy of a distribution into these two simple parts, tails and the body. So you may, and it might not be so clear sometimes. So for example, in this in this first guy where I'm hovering over, there's clearly these two tails, and this is the body that I'm talking about. Okay, likewise here we've got a tail, a tail and a body here there's no real tail so you could just kind of drop this kind of you don't need this is not really technical language tails and body but it is uh, oftentimes you will see these words especially tails used so when you're dealing with this this type of distribution which by the way is called a uniform or rectangular distribution uh, there are no tails and no body t per se okay so here we have one dominant tail a right tail and really a a left tail which almost is non-existent you could say it's non-existent uh, likewise here we have a dominant uh, left tail and here we have some some tails which drop off pretty quickly okay sometimes the tails will will go on forever and become asymptotic uh, theoretically and sometimes they will drop off very quickly like in this case or this case and almost here I'm almost reluctant to call them tails okay um, so that's just a good way to uh, just to, to learn and look to look at these. Um, so what about modes or peaks? So these are local minima, maxima rather. OK, so I've kind of scribbled all over these, but hopefully you can. I'll just point to this. So clearly there is a, a, a Mac, a peak there. This has one peak. We call this a unimodal distribution. Likewise, one peak. It's very clear. No peaks at all. Uh, one peak here on the far end, uh, upper range of the distribution. Flip side here, we have a peak, unimodal again, on the lower end of the distribution. 
Here we have two local maxima quite distinct from each other, so I'm comfortable calling it calling them both peaks or modes. So this we would call bimodal because there's two. And you can also imagine cases where you have multiple peaks, so multimodal distributions. Okay? So that's as far as peaks. Obviously the peaks are important because this is where the data seems to be concentrating. Okay? Because remember, the higher the peak, the higher concentration of values at that particular range. All right? Next, let's move on to sym symmetricity and skewness. So when we talk about a, a univariate numerical uh, distribution, symmetric, we are talking about a vertical line. So here clearly we have a symmetric distribution. I mean, I'm drawing the, the, the line of symmetry here. Maybe I should make it dotted. We have a symmetric distribution here. We have a symmetric distribution here. We have very asymmetric distributions both here and here. And also this is not really symmetric and neither is this one. Okay. By the way, these cases are much more advanced cases, these multimodal distributions and bimodal, which, uh, you will deal with um, on a more advanced course. There's, there's certain techniques uh, in dealing with these types of distributions that are quite different um, than dealing with unimodal distributions like the rest of the ones I've drawn here. Okay, so by the way, these symmetric ones, fine, but how about these guys that are very asymmetric, right? These two. These are skewed distributions, okay? Skewed in the sense that most of the values are concentrating on one side or the other side of the range of possible values this variable can take. So just to be clear, I'll draw one again. This is an example of a right skewed or negative or sorry, positively skewed distribution. So those are synonymous. So this is right skewed or positive skew, we call it. And this is an example of a left skew or negatively skewed distribution. Okay, so they do not have the symmetricity of the others. Okay, um, and then there are last point here specific Nate distributions that again, I've said this earlier are so common and so important that we have names for them. And you're going to see a bunch of these in your intro to stat courses. So you're going to see things like the normal distribution, the most important distribution. It's called the normal distribution. You're going to see the T distribution or students distribution. You're going to probably see a chi-square distribution and a F distribution. Those four are the four big named, let's call them, so let's, uh, we're using this named distributions in the world of statistics. There are many, many, many more, but these four go a long way in developing a lot of statistical theory and inference. Okay, so what do these guys look like? So let me just, just allude to some other shapes. So for example, let me take the most important one I talked about. This we already talked about is an example of a unimodal distribution, which is symmetric. But doesn't this also look like the profile of a bell? So we call this a bell-shaped distribution. That's just a description of what we're seeing. It's not the official name of it. There are certain named distributions that you're going to learn in your Intro to Stats course where, uh, that look like this. Okay? The most prominent one is the normal distribution. So the normal distribution will look like this. It will be bell-shaped. But also, there's another distribution that looks bell-shaped. That's called the T distribution or student's distribution. There's a difference between those two families of distributions and it's very subtle and they're also kind of related to each other. But we'll leave that to when you get to statistical inference. For now, just you should have an idea of how to look at a distribution, judge it, understand what you're looking at and also apply some terminology to what you're looking at. As far as, is it skewed? Is it symmetric? Is it unimodal? Uh, is it very concentrated? So here's another example of a bell shape, but a much more concentrated version. Right? I tried to draw this symmetric, sorry. So same bell shape, but a much more concentrated one, right? Most of the data seems to be much more squeezed much more tightly into this area than in the, than the bell above. Okay, so 
both symmetric, both unimodal, both bell-shaped, one more concentrated than the other. One, this one is more spread out, it seems. Okay, so I want you to start thinking like that, okay? And also now you got some terminology to attach to some of these ideas. So I hope this was helpful in clarifying some distribution characteristics. Till next time, make sure to subscribe, comment, and share. Have a great day.